I'm trying to do some honest assessment of myself here, and I'm doing it on camera because that's what I do, man. Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking about three of the planning habits that I think are working well for me and that I'd like to continue, and three of the planning habits that I'm in right now that I feel like are actually detrimental to me in one way or another, and I'd like to shed them in the upcoming year. This is something that I try to do every once in a while because it's it's helpful to kind of like take a an overview look at the way that you approach planning and however you plan, whether it's bullet journaling, weekly planning, decorative planning, whatever the case may be, looking at how you do it and making sure that the things that you're doing are serving you in the way that you want them to, whether it's making you happy, whether it is um, helping you get stuff done, whether it is helping you get more rest, whatever your, your goals and your wishes are for your practice of planning your life out, it's important to understand what you've gotten in the habit of and whether or not it's good for you to continue it or not. With all that being said, let's get into them. And I'm just going to alternate them back and forth because let's, let's go for some balance today, shall we? Not that I know anything about that. My first habit that I'm in, and this is actually a somewhat recent habit. It's something I kind of shied away from for a while because I thought it was kind of hokey. And then I started doing it and I realized it's actually helping me out because sometimes, Cindy, you can be too fucking cynical for your own good. And that's one of the habits I plan to keep keep and nourish, if you will, in this next year, and that is doing a weekly review. Now, I haven't been doing this in my personal life. This has been a work-related thing, and it has been going on this quarter since I started the HB90 system back in, well, I kind of started it in the summer, but I really gave it a try end of September, beginning of October. I will be doing a more thorough review on my thoughts on the HB90 system and the boot camp and everything else here during Vlogmas, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that, but in the meantime, I'll link the first video I did up above. She has a weekly review you're supposed to do every week to check on your progress, like how you're doing on your goals and what's helping and what's not helping to kind of help you assess. And it has been helpful. I, I don't I don't think I have gotten really deep into it. I'm just sort of in the habit of it, but it's something I want to continue into the next year work-wise. And something I kind of like to also really add in is finding a version of this that is related to my personal life that I can do that doesn't feel hokey. Because most of the ones I have experienced, especially the ones that people talk about in the bullet journal community, it just, it feels a little too woo woo for me. And I just, I, I shy away from that. I, if I, if I decide to go with the Moxie life for my personal goal setting for next year, I know they have a weekly little review situation. So that might be it, but I don't know for sure yet. I just think that I want to both continue doing this for work and see if I can find a way to do it in my personal life that feels useful, not like a giant cheese ball covered in almonds kind of situation. On the subject of weekly planning, the first planning habit that has been sort of a staple in my life for the last several years, the last all of my years, that I really would like to break out of in 2022 is overestimating how much I think I can get done in a given week. I've also in a given day, but I feel like the way for me to really sort of get out of this is now that I'm doing a lot more weekly thinking, especially when it comes to work, when it comes to using the Kanban board, is to really reduce or to be more realistic about what I think I can actually get done in any given week. And that hopefully means that then daily, I will be expecting less out of myself. The problem I'm running into is that I expect to get way more done than I think I will. And then I plan that out for the week and I'm all motivated. And usually a lot of my admin shit gets scheduled on Mondays and I can blow through a lot of that. And so I will. And then so Monday I'm done and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm on track for the week. And then I really start digging into like the the more intensive work on Tuesday and start falling behind on what I thought I was going to get done. Not because I'm slacking, but because I expected more out of myself than was reasonably possible. On top of that, as much as I know and am aware and talk about being careful with how you overextend yourself on any given time, especially if you have chronic illness or chronic pain that can like fuck with you as your week goes on, like I'm, I've gotten back in the habit of overscheduling myself and then 
getting a migraine or having major kidney pain or having something else happen, having something happen with one of my kids and then suddenly my week is thrown off and instead of recognizing that A, I had too many expectations of myself for the week and B, even if I had reasonable expectations, shit fucking happens. Instead of being kind to myself as time has gone on, I have gotten really down on myself about it and that doesn't help anybody. I have been better about this in the past and so I think I just need to kind of remember that and go back to it. So really the thing that I want to work on, especially in this next year, is to plan to do less each week than I think I can get done. And that way it helps account for times when I don't get to work as much when I'm not feeling good. It also means that if I get it all done and I have extra time, I can go to my Kanban board and work on the next priorities. Or maybe I can work less that day and do something for myself, like take a nap. Who fucking knew? So this next habit that I really want to hang on to and continue to both maintain and also expand into other areas in 2022 has a lot to do with the previous not so great habit that I'm talking about. And that is really understanding and utilizing certain blocks of time in my workday. Now, while I tend to overschedule and overbook myself for the week, one of the things I did say in that habit is that when it comes to admin tasks and certain repeating tasks, I have a very good grasp as to how long they take me, how much time I need to allocate to that, and then actually getting them done in that time frame, regardless of how I'm feeling. So what I really want to do in the next year is not only maintain that level of awareness of both what I can get done, when I can get it done, and how long it takes me, I would like to apply that same logic to other aspects in my work life. So certain other things. It's not a question of just scheduling the things and doing them in the block. It's really, really focusing on and becoming aware of the realistic amount of time it takes to do things and then applying that forward, seeing if I can still do things in that amount of time and then really making a habit of it, if that makes sense. A big thing for me is both focused art time and focused freelance time when I'm doing certain projects. I These are some of the areas where I expect to get a lot more done in a certain amount of time than I actually do or giving myself a whole bunch of time and then not needing to use all of it. I'm just not, when it comes to certain creative tasks, I'm just not as aware of how much time I actually need versus admin tasks where I have become fairly good at estimating how long something will take me. So I wanna see if I can focus on and learn to really understand the time that I need to be creative without hampering the actual creativity applying that process that I'm that I am very good now at applying to the admin side of my work to the creative side of my work. That was a lot of words for that, but that's it's a good habit that I'm in for part of my work and I would like to see if I can apply it to another part of my work. Does that make sense? I certainly hope so. <laughs> kind of in the same vein, my planning habit that I would like to break in 2022 is not prioritizing enough of my energy for my personal life. Now, I have been getting better at prioritizing time for my personal life because I'm trying really hard to set boundaries around when I work versus when I don't work. However, because of my aforementioned overscheduling myself during those hours, by the time I get to my personal life, I don't have any energy left. And what energy I do have, I have to devote to the various medical things that are going on in my household right now. So I need to at least figure out a way to allocate some more of my very limited energy to stuff outside of work and health stuff. And that's hard, especially when you're, you know, in kidney failure and you have kids who are struggling with men with medical and mental health stuff. But I, I need to work on that. And if I can work on it in terms of a planning context, in terms of planning not only my time, but around my energy levels, I think that that could really help me in both boundaries and balance, as well as actually accomplishing some of the things in my personal life. If you watch my recent goals video, I do mention in that video that it feels like even when I'm just focusing on personal goals, somehow I still manage to make it about work. I'm really struggling to 
prioritize stuff in my personal life, even when I give myself time for it. So I guess what I'm sort of coming to the conclusion of is that I need to be thinking not only in terms of time, but in terms of energy when it comes to both work and my personal life, but especially my personal life. The last habit that I'm feeling really good about that I want to carry into 2022 is a fairly simple one, but it is one that has been working really well for me. And that is touching my planner every single day at the start of my day for my work day. How many times did I just say day? A lot. I rely on my planner to keep my like all my things, my Kanban board, my Google calendar, and my physical planner to help me keep track of the work I actually need to get done. And I have found that on the days that I don't touch it, that I just try to free ball it, I don't get a lot done and I feel completely unmoored. It's obviously something I do need to maintain, but I've, I've gotten fairly good at it on the days that I work and I want to maintain that into the next year. And this, this has two sides to it. It's not just touching my planner every single day when I start my day, but it's also not spending too much time in my planner because there is the trap of falling into your planner where you spend more time planning than you do actually doing things. Planning is procrastination. I've been there, my dudes. And I think I've found a pretty good balance, at least with work, when it comes to making sure I'm using it to remember what I need to get done, not allowing it to be like a time suck, if that makes sense. On the flip side of that, and this is my final habit I'd like to break in 2022, it is the habit of not touching my planner at all on my days off. And it's not because I feel like I don't, I want to just like live my life open and free on my days off and not worry about planning my life out. It's not about that. It's actually the fact that I'm trying so hard to set boundaries between work and home and my planners are all in my office. If I come into my office, I'll get sucked into work. So this habit, it's not that I want to structure my days off hardcore. I don't need to do that. Like, that's not how I like to have my days off. But there is plenty of things that need to get done on my days off that's easy for me to lose track of if I don't have any way to pay attention to it. So the habit I need to build in 2022, aside from separating work and plan work and home planning, which is a big focus for me, and you'll hear about that when I get towards the end of the month, is to actually have a spot that is not my office that has some of my supplies and some stuff where I can go and sit and maybe journal or do a little bit of weekend planning or whatever the case may be. I know where it's gonna be. It's gonna be in the nook in my bedroom, but I have not done that yet. I have not even created that yet. And that is going to be something that happens towards the end of the month. I didn't put it on my power sheets, but now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should go back and add it. That's a big thing is to have at least a glance at my planner on the weekends, not because I want to get work done, but because I do want to keep track of whatever I need to do that weekend. Create a routine around that that does not involve my office. That is a big focus for me, especially in January. I know this video has been a little bit rambly, but like I said, this wasn't just me listing these things out and talking to them. I was really talking through my thoughts here on camera. I hope that this has helped you and that you are able to really stop and assess some of the things and congratulate yourself on the things that you are doing that you think are very useful for you so that you can decide if you want to continue them or even enhance them in the next year versus things that are really not working for you and start thinking about ways to like drop them like a bad habit because they are <sighs> whatever the case may be i'd love to hear from you in the comments below tell me one thing you think you're doing really well with your planning routine and one thing that you would like to kick to the curb with your planning routine because, you know, we all can encourage each other and you may find that you are not the only one. I'm sure I am not the only one who struggles with some of the things I just talked about. So let's talk about it in the comments because I love the comments. The comments are a good spot. Remember this month I am uploading videos every single day. So be sure to be subscribed and all the things. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, my friends, peace.